happen is you. It's a metaphor for your lower mind. It's an aspect of your mind that wants the material things, the lust, the desire, the food, the money, the fame and the power. That is Satan. God is the one that wants the love, the wisdom and the knowledge. The devil never tempts you. It's your mind tempting you to do the negative things. It's a personification. It's a metaphor. They never want you to figure this out because then once you realize this, you can no longer blame the devil for manifesting negative things in your life. You manifested the negative things in your life. Everything is a reflection of your mind. Everything is in the mind before it manifests physically. They never want you to figure this out because you give away your creative power to them when you believe in an external God or an external devil. Everything is within you, people. Religion's the biggest scam on this earth. Shalom, Yashrala Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. And I'm coming back to, at y'all with another video. This is in regards to a message I had seen from a brother. As y'all seen in that video before, um, you know, he was asking me different questions in regards to Gnosticism. And, you know, that's just another form of people who believe that the Bible is not literal, but that it's metaphorical. And ultimately the reason why I'm doing this video is because a lot of these philosophies, a lot of these false understandings are very, very popular. As y'all can see from that video, it had 40,000 views. And the one thing that y'all need to understand is the Bible is not the only book that people try to get enlightenment from quote unquote enlightenment or spiritual knowledge and wisdom. You know, us human beings, we have a natural inclination to understand that there is something past our eyes. We can sense it, we can feel it, especially if you're an Israelite, so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, or if you're the, you know, if you have the appearance of a Gentile, but your seed line goes back to the original 12 patriarchs of the son, the sons of Jacob. So you have to understand that, you know, people try to tap into getting understanding through spirituality. But the thing you need to remember is that in this world, wide is the gate that leadeth to death and destruction. Let's get that verse real quick. All right, this is the book of Matthew 7 and 13. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto the light unto life and few there be that find it so to understand the true life of the word and of the scripture is going to be a very straight and narrow path a very difficult tumultuous path that when you follow that philosophy the vast majority of the people of the earth are not going to want to support you and understand it and believe in it so you know the reason why i'm bringing this up is because when you got stuff like kabbalism and the kabbalah and things like that these are things that have been shunned in the past but they are from those who dwell in the secrets. And essentially with the internet and TikTok and social media, a lot of this information is being spread just like the truth of the word in regards to the conventional Israelite knowledge and the different you know, uh, bodies that sprouted through that. So the brother asked me, he said, what do you think of this book? Look through the videos. So essentially this is in regards to a lot of the ancient occult system um, they were basically breaking down how they believe that when you read the Bible, when you read stories about Hamashiach, it's in regards to sun worship. And I did mention this in my last video where I broke down um, Kendrick versus Drake. And I was explaining to you how when Kendrick, he calls himself the Elohim or the, the God's son, also in regards to Nas. They're not talking about Hamashiach and Hawashai. They're talking about these false pagan gods because this is the most important thing that I can tell you when it comes to the deception of these different philosophies, they mirror the Bible. One thing that Chronicles of Judah would always say in his videos is that the left hand oftentimes try to mimic the word. So when you look at a lot of these quote unquote great philosophers such as Muhammad, such as Buddha, such as uh, Ra, such as Baal. All of these different traditions and, and false gods, they have elements that are similar to the word. Even when you look at Zeus, right? They have a lot of elements to the word. But one thing that you need to understand is that there's only one truth. And that's how Satan gets people is that he layers false understandings and tries to intermix it with the word. So when you see a lot of stuff like this, you can tell 
uh, you know, December 25th. And, you know, a lot of Christians falsely believe that that is the day when Hamashiach was born, which we know is a lie. He was born around the springtime. There's no exact date, but when you read the, the scriptures in context, you know that's not the truth. And you also have to understand Horus, the Egyptian sun god, quote unquote, 12 disciples. Y'all can see it at the bottom. Mirtha, Buddha, quote unquote, Jesus Christ. So you see a lot of these different elements from these different, quote unquote, these different religions that align with the mainstream Christian narrative. And one thing you need to understand, bro, is that that is all a deception and all lies. Um, and when I was talking with you, you know, you were saying how you stay away from the mainstream church because you want to go with something that's not new, something that's different. And I agree with that. But you got to be very careful because when you're dealing with stuff like this, this is what's going to lead you to become bugged out. And you're essentially going to intermix the purity of the word and you're going to mix it in with self-worship. That's really what all these philosophies go back into. This is the book of Proverbs 5 and 14. It says, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink, drink waters out of thine own cisterns and running waters out of thine own wells. So Solomon through the word is saying that you must drink waters out of your own cistern to avoid the strange woman. Now, when you look at this at face value, this is talking about a woman who might be a harlot or she might be an adulterous woman. But layered in between this, this is actually talking about different philosophies, different doctrines, because the spirit of wisdom is personified as a woman, right? The wife of thy youth. But a lot of these false doctrines are the personification of a strange woman. So in regards to John chapter 4 and 13, it says, Hamashiach answered and said unto the woman, whoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in a well of water springing up to everlasting life. So, you know, for those of y'all brothers who read this, Hamashiach is correlating knowledge to water, right? Not literal physical water, but spiritual water that goes within your mind and replenishes you. And it gives you life to be able to move through, through life with true wisdom, knowledge and understanding. So that knowledge is pure. There's no lies. There's no fallacies. But essentially what happens when you start to dabble in these different philosophies that relate back to the Bible, quote unquote, like Freemasonry, like in uh, Islam, like um, Kabbalah, you know, the occult, things like that, is that the waters that you're trying to learn from Hamashiach's teaching, they become corrupted. And a lot of jakes that I've met throughout the past, not a lot, but there have been certain brothers and even some sisters where when they dwell into the spiritual aspect of the word, they're unable to filter out the false understanding and that is a prophetic the prophetic nature of this word hamashiach said it so this is the book of matthew chapter 13 and verse 18 it says hear you therefore the parable of the sower when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not then cometh the wicked one and catch away that which was sown in his heart this is he which receiveth seed by the wayside and brother for you you know you've been following me for a few years i don't know how deep into my videos or any brother videos you've gotten into but essentially bro what happens is that when you start to find the true light of the word from somebody who understands the word according to the holy spirit is that satan has different agents and different philosophies that may try to come into your ear to tell you that the things that you're reading from the bible are very similar to these false understandings so the brother he had asked me, he asked me what I think about the book and through the videos. And I said, I'm familiar with it. And you ask him, do I think the information is legit or should you read it? He said, yes, it is legit. And should I learn it? And I said, those are pagan and occultic knowledge. That knowledge tries to mirror the Bible to deceive people. He says, yeah, true. It's like they make books stemming from the Bible. eh? I seen your videos and I know you have occultic knowledge. So thinking some of it's legitimate. And look, bro, my, my occult knowledge is low level. You know, I'm not one of these brothers who knows the different iterations of these false pagan gods off the top of the back of like the back of my hand. But, you know, over time, as y'all brothers learn and study, things start to connect easier for you. So I said I told him, I said, it's a man's way of trying to understand the most High's ways without following the Bible. That's what Lucifer means. He bears light or understanding, but he takes a, takes you away from the light into a false light. That's what those teachings do. So just like with the water, you know how much how uh, Solomon said, drink water of cisterns out of your own well. It's the same thing with the light because Hamashiach says what I am. the I am the way I am the light.
You know what I'm saying? And he also said, in order to get to the Father, you must go through me. So for you to follow the true way to be to you know be reconciliated with the Most High, you have to follow the light of Christ. And one thing about uh, the the term Lucifer is that they are false light bearers. So when you look at all these different spiritual doctrines like Hermeticism and five percenting, and I can go down the list. They offer a false illusion of light, but it's not the actual light. It's kind of like an angler fish. For those of y'all brothers who don't know what that is, Google it. Those fish who dwell at the depths of the ocean, right? And they have a light that you think is a real light, and you come to the light just for a fish to devour you and destroy your soul. It's the same thing with these different books because the, the knowledge is a deep and vast ocean. And you know, with the ocean, there are many different things, many different types of and bodies of water. A lot of times it gets contaminated and the deeper and deeper you get, the harder it is to tell you what's real from what's fake. So you have to have a, a rooted understanding of the word because when you start to dwell in stuff like this and you don't think that it's fake or you feel like it has some elements of truth in it, it's gonna corrupt your mind i can promise you bro so now that we kind of understand that one key aspect of the word that you're gonna always relay it back to is that the true doctrine of the most high has a deep-rooted fear of the most high this is proverbs 1 and 7. it says the fear of the most high is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise despise wisdom and instruction my son hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother so essentially the reason why i want to bring this up is because the true word of the most high you have an instillment of true fear and the fear of the most high is keeping his word in fullness and sincerity so when you look at these different philosophies if you see different tenets that contradict the word or the commandment of the most high then you know that that's not real when you look at a lot of the freemasonry when you look at a lot of the occult teachings yeah they may try to relay teachings to hamashiach or whatever it may be but they have things within their specific belief that completely contradicts the word self-worship um you know magic enchantment sorcery channeling false spirits uh pagan holidays and that's why you need to be able to take that veil of christianity from off your eyes so you can see that even uh, religions like uh islam and christianity and catholicism they all follow after it because at the root of it it goes back to the occult, the Babylonian Kemetic mystery school system. And when you have somebody who's able to break down how all these different religions worship after a divine feminine, a divine masculine, and a divine child in the, the different figures who represent these, these false entities, it's easy for you to be able to pick up on the patterns of what Satan is doing, so that way you don't fall for it. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So the same thing that had caused people to commit fornication and wickedness and spiritual idolatry thousands and thousands of years ago, the same thing is being done in this time because the angels haven't changed. The left hand angels have not changed in how they deceive people. It's just that the appearance of what deceived people in the past has been slightly altered. But the same concept, the same downfall of man, it continues to happen over and over and over again. So when you look at a lot of these philosophies, you have to look and see, is this promoting self-glory, self-worship? Is this putting me in the position of the most high? Or am I in the in the proper way where I still have a fear in a in an understanding that the most high is control of my life compared to a lot of these philosophies that say that you control your own life, right? Alright, so I want to go to the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12, in a book called the Apocrypha. It says, For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. So the beginning of spiritual fornication, which was idolatry, worshiping a false god or somebody as a false god, that was the beginning of spiritual fornication. It was through certain idols that were set up, uh, whether it be wood, stone, or even men. Now I'm going to go to verse 27. It says, for the worshiping of the idols not to be named in the begin is the beginning, the cause and the end of all evil. So when you understand Genesis chapter three, and I forgot what verse, when the serpent came unto Eve and she ate of the apple that are not the apple, but the fruit that brought sin into the world. It wasn't a literal fruit. It was allegorical for them being enlightened by the knowledge of the serpent where they worship themselves as false gods. And when you understand history and you do studying of these religions and you have the proper context, 
all these different false gods tie back to these figures. Um, you guys can do some research on the mystery school system, but just a quick summary. It goes back to Cush, Semiramis, and their child Nimrod. Cush is the progenitor of a lot of the wisdom that was brought into the world. And the figure of Cush goes back to a figure called Hermes. That's where you get the modern iteration of Hermeticism. Now, no, a lot of the teachings that happened right after the flood with Noah and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and uh, Japheth, maybe the, the teachings aren't the exact literal same, but those teachings have been passed down, down throughout history. And those figures of Kush, Nimrod, and Samaramis have taken different forms throughout different languages. Because when you understand the Tower of Babel, Nimrod was one of the one, the main one who led the apostasy against the Most High. And what happened? The Most High, he split the languages. So a lot of these different figures that you know in the ancient world have been repackaged and changed throughout life to these different figures which came into these different beliefs in these different systems and religion and that's why people follow after things like hermeticism so when you do some research on ancient hermeticism the main teacher that they talk about is hermes let's let's look into who hermes is the legendary figure of hermes trismegistus hermes thrice great is the inspiration for the spiritual teachings known as hermeticism he is a syncretism joining of the Greek deity Hermes, the winged messenger of the gods, and his Egyptian counterpart, the ibis-headed moon god, Thoth. Herm so for those of y'all brothers who are familiar with the occult system, Hermes is the Greek iteration of Kush, right? And then for those of y'all who understand the Egyptian aspect of it, that's also the same god Thoth. So a lot of times when you look throughout history, especially during the Hellenization period, a lot of the Greek gods and the Egyptian gods, they were morphed into one. Because also when you guys look into the god named Helios Christos, that's where you get the modern term of Jesus Christ, right? Christos, Christ, Helios, son. So you have to be able to understand that in these times, a lot of these deities were being, um, how do I put this the right way? They were being personified into gods that eventually would be pushed upon the masses. And Thoth were considered to be one and the same. Both of them were psychopomps, guides in the land of the dead. Thoth is also the god who presides over speech and interpretation. He's the inventor of the alphabet and the art of writing. Ever since, humans have been using writing to preserve the vast array of accumulated knowledge. Thoth is called the heart of Ray the tongue of Atom, the throat of the god whose name is hidden. As divine speech personified, he is the creator of every branch of knowledge, human and divine. When Hermes met Thoth in Greco-Egyptian Alexandria, Hermes Trismegistus was born. Not long after, followers of the Thrice Great One came together and devoted themselves to understanding his wisdom and to achieving the same cosmic illumination that Hermes himself had experienced. Hermes Trist so real quick, he said many of his philosophers followed to achieve the same le level of illumination as Hermes did, because in their eyes, he is the great father. He is the father God, quote unquote. Right. That goes back to Cush because Cush was the father of Nimrod. And those were the two who led the um, the uh, rulership in the time of ancient Babylon. And when you look at a uh, Nimrod and you look at him being a mighty hunter, when you do some research, his kingdom stretched across much, much of the ancient world. I think Egypt, as well as the land of quote unquote Canaan before it became the land of Israel. And also, I know some brothers say that he also ruled in Greece. Um, Y'all have to do some more research on that. But he also ruled in ancient Babylon as well. So he did have a very mighty and powerful kingdom at the time when he decided to build the Tower of Babel before the Most High confused the languages. But when they confused the languages, essentially what happened is that a lot of the personifications of the same people became different iterations. So like when he said Hermes is just another iteration of, Th of Thoth, they are essentially gods who had similar characteristics in different regions that whenever the Hellenization period came, I think around 300 BC, anywhere between that time, 200, 300 BC, when the Greeks had that great kingdom under Alexander the Great and the four generals, uh, typically what happened is that the Greeks kind of came in and they Hellenized a lot of the aspects of 
um, you know, the Egyptian occultism and they somewhat morph together. And that's where you get a lot of the modern iterations of these guys that you see and know today. Magistus is the author of the famed Emerald Tablet, which is the source of the most well-known hermetic dictum, as above, so below. The key to astrology, alchemy, and other occult science. So he said the key to as above, so, so below. And also the aspects of, I forgot what he said. He said alchemy, he said astrology, and then he said something else. I don't, uh, I think it was also magic as well. So when it comes to Hermes, the figure Hermes, aka Kush, he was the father of a lot of the hidden knowledge, a lot of the ancient knowledge that was passed down from the serpent to Adam and Eve pre-flood and he carried it over post flood like a lot of y'all brothers who watch judah you guys are familiar with him breaking down some of these things but you can do your own research it's, it's literally all over the internet the emerald tablet has a history as mysterious as its authors if we call hermes a myth we thereby so as you can see right there he got one hand up as above and then he got one hand down so below or as above so below so if you guys look at the a picture of white jesus he has his fingers pointed up and down because he also represents this figure also when you look at the back of hermes you have some form of light uh, representing illumination and then you have the sun in the moon you have um two opposites coming together that's where you get the black and, and white the purple and the gold you know when you look at the lakers colors when you look at naruto sasuke and naruto a lot of these different aspects that you see with the sports entertainment with movies with shows a lot of these elements get repeated and brought back with all these different figures because they all go back to the same mystery cult system that's why when brothers say Freemasonry is similar to occultism, is similar to New Age spiritualism, is similar to Christianity. This is why we say it. Even when you look at Hinduism, or not a Hinduism, Buddhism, you have Siddhartha Gautama. He's teaching people how to reach a level of spiritual enlightenment. Isn't that the exact same thing as Christ consciousness? So everything ties back together because they all go back to the same teachings. It's just that, that some of them bastardize the Bible more than others. And some of them covertly hide a lot of the elements of the mystery occult system compared to others. They blatantly show you what it is because it's all spread throughout the world. And that's why the vast masses of people are being deceived because they don't understand what's really going on behind the scenes recognize that he is greater and more significant than any one historical figure, for he represents a perennial pattern of the human condition. Hermes is a person without crystallized personality, an archetype that perhaps represents all truth seekers, or the truth seeker. Certainly, he experiences that which all truth seekers hope to experience. So I don't want to go too much into this video because as y'all can see on the bottom, this video is 53 minutes long. I watch most of the videos to kind of, you know, up my, my understanding on what hermeticism is actually about. You know, uh, some of y'all brothers can go in and do your own research. But I just, just to be honest with you, understanding stuff like this is not going to lead you to salvation. Now, it is important to understand the devices of Satan if you got time. But I'm just going to be honest with you, bro. If you're somebody who doesn't understand the Bible, really read, grasp, study these videos and understand the word for yourself. Because if not, you're going to essentially mix a lot of the false teachings of the self-worship, Gnosticism and whatever, whatever uh, different philosophies uh, are associated with this and try to associate it with the Bible that you're not going to be rooted in anything. And you're ultimately going to get confused and get picked out of the knowledge. Now, just a real quick understanding in regards to hermeticism. I know you asked about the seven principles of hermeticism. Um, I'm really not trying to go too deep into this, but we can kind of go over the basic aspects. Just go on chat GPT and you can get a summary of a lot of this stuff. But it says hermeticism, a philosophical and spiritual system rooted in the teachings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus outlines seven core principles that describe the nature of reality and universe. So essentially, this is a wise man or because we don't even know if this figure is, is really real. Again, y'all brothers understand that Kush is real. But the personification of Hermes Trismegistus, when, you, when a lot of scholars did some research on it, they understood that he was a mythological figure, right? So clearly somebody made up the personification of who he actually was. 
but this is essentially man's doing of trying to understand spiritual concepts whether it be the stars whether it be astronomy whether it be uh, like you know aspects of magic astrology things like that those things in a sense are real they do have power in them when you do the law of attraction and affirmations and stuff like that it is real but you need to understand you are tapping into the power of left hand spirits so that's why you know brothers and sisters should really just leave this stuff alone because depending on what you messing with and how you mess with it it can screw your knowledge and your understanding but we'll get into it It says the principle of mentalism it says the princi principle states that the all is mine and that everything that happens has its origin in the mind so when you look at that one dude at the beginning and he was talking about <laughs> you know uh, hell is your mind and all the bad thoughts and the lust and you know people who say that satan or the devil was tempting them that was just the negative aspects of your mind a lot of that stuff is rooted back to this principle that everything was created in your mind we you hear people say oh you create your own reality you create bad times now the bible does say as a man thinketh in his heart in his mind so his so is he because your mind is very powerful that you can have a certain outlook on your life and that can affect the type of life that you live that is true to a certain extent but in a grand scheme of things the most high is the one who's in control of everything there's actually a scripture that talks on that all right so this is proverbs 16 and 9 it says a man's heart devise his, his deviseth his way but the most high directeth his steps so essentially your mind can devise your way can tell you what you need to do the plan you have the way that you look but it's ultimately the most high directing directing you to where he wants you to go and what your your role is going to be filled in his divine movie his divine plan so when you look at the quote-unquote principle of mentalism it says all is the mind and everything happens it has an origin in the mind the universe itself is a mental creation of the all which is an infinite universal mind so they basically believe that everything created within the use of the universe comes from your mind and that we create everything within and it's probably a little bit deeper than that but we're just going over the principal aspects of it and whenever you talk to somebody like this ask them okay if you believe that your mind created everything did your mind create all the bad stuff that happened to you whether your family died did you think about that when uh the the pandemic happened did you think of that that all these people that you know and cared about you would want to lose in your job because a lot of these people they do not fully understand the concept of judgment they use things like karma they use things like your mind is what's creating your bad times but they don't understand the aspect of judgment because it's really judgment and a lot of people try to quantify judgment and think okay well why do bad people um you know get away with everything and they live life on easy mode and they don't receive judgment it's because the most high doesn't want them to receive the judgment right then and there and plus we don't know what type of stuff they go through behind the scenes you may see a great and lavish life and all these money all this money and all these fine women but you have no clue and no idea the type of demons that they might fight behind the scenes so everything that you see is not truly what's going on because the most high is the ultimate is the one who's ultimately in control of everything in front of us so when you believe that you know your mind is what creates everything in front of you that is an aspect of hermeticism also if y'all read the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. He has another book called Outwitting the Devil. I actually read this book before I became, you know, in the faith, right? And there's specific things that he personifies Satan as being all the negative thoughts within your mind and that it's in battle against the universal thoughts and, and the true powers, which you could say he was trying to personify, quote unquote, God, but he was actually describing something similar to this because a lot of them you know they're occultists and they believe in stuff like this that's what that book was actually about when you read it now it says the next concept the principle of correspondence known for the axiom as above so below as below so above this principle expresses the idea that there is harmony agreement and correspondence between the different planes of existence physical mental and spiritual and y'all brothers understand that a lot of alleged freemasons and people in the knowledge the kabbalah they believe in the concept of as above so below you see it with a lot of rappers with a lot of you know musicians actors and it's just it's it's all within our society even when it comes to these scripted events 
Next one, he goes over the principles of vibration. This principle asserts that everything is in constant motion and vibrates at its own frequency. Nothing is at rest and differences between the manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result from varying rates of vibration. And I didn't do too much research on this. You know, this is pretty straightforward. Um, the next one, the principles of polarity. According to this principle, everything has its pair of opposites. Those opposites are identical in nature, but different degree, and they are extremes of the same thing. Understanding this principle helps comprehend the dualities and paradoxes of life. And that's why oftentimes when you brothers do some understanding on the occult, you hear about them in regards to duality, the dualistic nature of a lot of the rituals that they have you know with freemasonry you have the checkerboard floor that's oftentimes what that represents when it comes to the political parties you have the red and the blue the yellow and the purple a lot of times it's personified with these sports teams whether it be in the nba the nfl even when it comes to the rap beef in regards to drake representative of all black and kendrick representative of all white for purity and that's why a lot of these different gods they have dualistic natures when it comes to their color schemes so that way they can flip between the light and the dark aspects that we that we know from these different movies shows etc etc You got the principle of rhythm. This principle states everything flows in and out, rises and falls, moves in a measured rhythm. The pendulum swing manifested in everything, influencing the cycles, patterns, and phases of life in the universe. I didn't do much research on that, just being honest with y'all. The principle of cause and effect. The principle posits that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. Nothing happens by chance and everything follows a law. This principle helps to understand the interconnectedness of events and actions. And a lot of brothers speak about how there is no such thing as a coincidence, but we associate it with the power of the Most High Yahweh by Shem Shai. Whereas again, this is, uh, you know, a worldly wisdom, um, worldly knowledge, secular knowledge, explaining the aspects of judgment in regards to the aspect of cause and effect, associating with a law, associating with a universal principle that can be applied. Does that make sense? And the last one is in regards to the principle of gender. It says, the principle of gender exists in everything and it manifests as the masculine and feminine principles. And this all ties back to the divine child, going back all the way to the times of Nimrod. That's why you guys have a lot of these transformers that are being glorified when it comes to these false gods, especially when it comes to the Baphomet and the goat. We already went over this aspect, but that's why we see a lot of raptors touching in with their feminine side, a lot of women dressing up as men. You have the aspects of cross dressing, um, the yin and the yang. A lot of it goes back into these principles. And when you understand these things and you understand the word, it makes perfect perfect sense why a lot of these celebrities and actors and high-ranking elites and people like that follow what they follow because when you go into the Kabbalah, when you go into Freemasonry, when you go into the occult, they all have these similar principles. They may not be the exact same, we get that, but they all go back to the same philosophies and the same sex. It says, this is not just about physical sex, but about the dual nature found in all things, influencing creation and generation. And that's why a lot of these celebrities worship the image of the transgender because it goes back <laughs> into their false beliefs and things. And I want to bring up some pictures so y'all can see exactly what I'm talking about. So for those of y'all who don't know, this is the image of the Baphomet. Y'all can see the intertwining serpents, the fingers going up and down for as above, so below, the five-pointed star, the torch for illumination, and then the sun on the bottom and the sun on the top, a light moon with a dark shadow, and then a dark moon with a light shadow. And for those of y'all who don't understand that, um, those um, inscriptions on the bottom, I forgot the exact phrase, because I did a video on this like a year and a half ago, but the phrase is in regards to there's truth in all religions. And then when you see the Sov and the Koala, that's just a Latin term for destroy and rebuild, right? So, um, you know, this is obviously an aspect of an image that a lot of these guys follow, but I want y'all to see some of the similarities in some of the pictures that I got from that video where the guy was breaking down her medicine. So this is one of the pictures that was on that video, as y'all can kind of see in regards to the hermeticism, because 
I think what they did is they found a lot of these ancient artifacts and these ancient paintings for people who were hermeticists throughout throughout times. So y'all can kind of see it's very similar. You got the moon, you got the sun, you have the intertwining serpent, you have the uh, triangle in regards to that that figure right there. I think also on the top right, you have an image of goats. I just got this as it was scrolling through the uh, video. so. You know, I couldn't get everything clearly because it was moving as I was taking a picture. But y'all can see some of the same elements of the Baphomet. It goes back into the ancient Hermeticist uh, symbolism. Also right here, now I think this is an image of Hermes. So as you can see, he's a man with angel wings. He has the intertwining serpents on both sides. He has an image of the sun and of the moon. So as y'all can see, I wanted to focus on this picture because this it speaks about the intertwining serpents. Now the term for it is the Kabakis, if I'm pronouncing that right. And this also is representative of the Kundalini energy. For those of y'all brothers who understand, when you see a lot of brothers with the serpent symbols, the infinity symbol, Kobe has a symbol of the, um, the snake eating itself in the form of an eight. That's what his jersey number was for, as y'all brothers know. And then also he had 24, cause two times four is eight, but also two plus four is six. Um, but I wanted to get over into this aspect of the intertwining serpents because this also represents what? It looks like what? It looks like a DNA strand. And y'all know a lot of these scientists, they're into secular wisdom and some of them, quiet is kept, they have ties back to the occult Freemasonry, Hermeticism, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because even when you look at the symbol for like modern medical institutions, a lot of times, a lot of times you'll have the intertwining serpents going up and you have the, the rod and the staff. I don't know the specifics of the rod and the staff, but they do have similar symbology back to the uh, Kundalini energy. But getting back into this, when you look at the strand of DNA, they say it has what, 23 pairs of chromosomes. That's where you get the numerology of 23 with Jordan, with Kobe, not with Kobe, with LeBron, and also with Magic Johnson, cause 32 is just 23 in reverse. So you see that. And then one aspect that you see that I wanted to get to is in regards to the chakras. Another aspect that I pulled up when you see it says it's called the Saha, Sahasara chakra. So you have the seven different chakras, right? And remember, when you look at the point of your spine, they say that you have 33 points from, the, from the, your lower back all the way up to the top of your head or your crown chakra. So essentially, that's where you get the term 33 uh, because... When you also go up into the aspect of Freemasonry, they have what? They have 33 levels of Freemasonry. Now, when you do some research on it, you look up different videos, they'll tell you that that's not the case, but that's the main number that's associated with the Masons, 33rd degree and the 33rd and the third degree, because they also try to mirror the numerology, right? So getting into this, you have the intertwining serpents with the seven chakras, and then you see a lot of the different symbolisms. You see the, uh, what is it called? The star of, not Molech. I think it's the star of Chephrim or something like that, which also ties into people following the quote unquote shield of David. I don't wanna get too deep into all this stuff, but I just wanna bring it up with you so that way y'all can see a lot of the ties. Like even when you look up reaching Christ conscious, that's just in regards to them reaching enlightenment. Cause when you do some studying on hermeticism, they follow the same aspects. You have the student and the teacher role. It's really crazy when you do some research. But the point of this, bro, because especially if you don't really understand a lot of this, I don't want to go too deep into this because none of this stuff is important for you really following the light of the most high. You can really only use this to kind of see how people are being deceived. But at the end of the day, this is just the work of left hand angels because what the Most High uses Satan for and what Satan's role on the earth is he's the adversary. The adversary to who? To the elect. So he has a lot of these false lights and false understandings so that way he can, you know, lead people to their fate. So the reason why if you do learn anything about this or, you know, if you have any information on this, understand that these are all a part of Satan's devices. And you're not going to come to the Most High Yahweh by following after these false lights period because the mashiach said no man can get to the father except he go through me if you go through the well of everlasting life with the pure waters of knowledge if you go through the pure light you know what i'm saying if you go through the tree of life that's what's going to allow you to get to the father not this other bullshit just being straightforward with you 
you need to understand this it says and do not marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works so think about this as well satan is transformed into an angel of light so you need to understand certain aspects of the left hand path when it comes to these angels is that they can morph themselves they can morph their spirit into acting as if it is a spirit of light y'all brothers this is one thing that i did i went on chat i'm using chat gpt and i essentially hypothesized after doing some of this research is i hypothesized how would left hand angels try to mimic the ways of the bible because what the left hand angels do is they try to pervert the word of the bible so that way you cannot believe in the bible and think that the bible is talking about something else like growing up my mom would say that the bible just mocks i mean not mocks mimics a lot of the ancient egyptian and greek pantheons and gods right that's literally what she used to tell me when i was growing up and when you look at a lot of these different uh philosophies that's essentially what they do they know the prophecies of the bible so they have these different figures like tammuz or uh, nimrod tammuz being the reborn sun god who is resurrected from the dead and the rays of the light you have ra you have the god helios where he rides around and he goes with the sun and essentially when you look at hamashiach and you understand the elements that make hamashiach they copy it and they try to pervert it and put themselves in because that's what Kush, Nimrod, and Semiramis did. And not just them, but that's also what Adam and Eve did all the way back to the time of Garden, which, 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 uh, to the time of the Garden of Eden, which brought death into the world because the first beginning of evil was what? Spiritual fornication. And again, Ecclesiastes 1 and 10 says, there is no new thing under the sun. So the angels and what they was doing in the time, the left-hand angels, they're doing the same thing. So this says in traditional Christian theology, angels are typically categorized into two main groups. Those who are remain faithful to the most high, often associated with the right hand and those who rebelled against him. And just a FYI, the left hand angels are in full control of the most high. You can read about that in first Kings or what is it second Kings and uh, first Chronicles, right? It says they are often associated with the left hand, those angels. It says angels who rebelled against the Most High, such as Lucifer and his followers, are commonly referred to as fallen angels or demons. And no, they're not fallen angels because, again, they're in full control by the Most High. It says, however, if we explore the idea of left hand angels as a concept within the occult and esoteric traditions, it's important to note that this term not commonly used in the same way as left hand path or right hand path. Nevertheless, if we consider the concept in a metaphorical or symbolic sense, one could speculate on how certain beings or entities within occultism might be perceived in an attempt to mimic and subvert biblical principles. So long story short, I went and told Jihad GPT, how do wicked angels deceive people with the Bible? And look at what they hypothesize and look how, how, how concise it was, bro. Listen, it says the first thing, the first thing they would deceptive they would do deceptive masquerade so it says left hand angels if they were to exist might attempt to mimic the attributes and characteristics of traditional angels but with ulterior motives they present themselves as benevolent guides or messengers while subtly leading individuals astray from biblical teachings or moral principles is this literally not what we just read about Hermes is this not literally what we just read when we was talking about Freemasonry and New Age spiritualism and the dude was saying oh you know heaven is just your head and you know it's just you know it's just, when you think it's God it's just your mind telling you it's positive energy and you need to understand this all comes from your mind your powers because <laughs> bro it's trying to mix the Bible with words to give you what to make you worship yourself as a god self-worship that's literally the role of these angels bro when you understand it that's why it makes so much sense that this is the left hand path working to deceive the masses let's go into the next one it says twisted interpretation it says these beings might distort or pervert biblical narratives teachings or symbols to serve their own agendas remember you went into the, to the chakra it had the same stars uh, the same symbol as the star of david and they it was representing their chakras because oftentimes they mimic the symbolism that the most high created 
as you know a specific tool for righteousness and they mimic it so you think that that tool of righteousness is really just meant to be a symbolism for worldly and secular knowledge right in false pagan gods it says they could often they could offer interpretations of scriptures to justify selfishness hedonism or rebellion against divine authority leading individuals down a path of spiritual deception if that ain't more clear i don't know what is when you look at the aspects of what um the law of attraction or when you look at the aspects of what a lot of these pagan gods like saturn what they represent when you have feasts like saturnalia you, you do go into hedonism when you look at these different sex parties and sex orgies that a lot of them follow allegedly follow it goes into this and they're leading in apostasy or what a rebellion against the authority of the most high going back to the tower of babel trying to complete and put the capstone on the pyramid trying to finish the great work of the tower of babel all nations all tongues coming together under what one belief one nation one government and one quote-unquote god a false god all right the next one promise of power and knowledge it says left hand angels might entice individuals with promises of worldly power when you think about freemasonry one of the ways that it allures people is secretive in that you know because i'll admit this before i became an israelite i did have a run-in with somebody who was telling me about freemasonry and i didn't understand he was a part of an all black lodge and he was saying how when you join you can get connections to many powerful people who have a lot of understanding because he had a library full of books and we was talking about angel numbers and it was very tempting it's like wow you know a lot of this about knowledge because a lot of people when they're seeking belief and understanding in the spiritual aspect of the world they try to dive into all these different philosophies and they love the belief of the power and the knowledge that it can gain them because you got people like Kyrie Irving Kevin Durant who are alleged hermeticists or five, um, alleged five percenters even Kendrick in that song he said five percent is lost because he might allegedly you know dwell in aspects of five percenters nah it's it's very obvious so when you following after these beliefs by left hand uh angels they give you oh look at the worldly power you can get look at the esoteric knowledge you can get and look at the personal enlightenment that you can get because it what does it say it says appeals to humans desires for mastery autonomy or transcendence and uh, that's what all these different things go back into you're transcending from the physical world to the spiritual world which when you think about it that's the promise that the most high gives unto his elect but he's the one who gives it if you follow his word it's not something that you can find and go on a path and reach enlightenment yourself the most high can you're not going to be enlightened on your own it's the most high who puts the light in you who gives you the spirit to be able to see the light so again it all goes back into self-worship it says in doing so they could tempt individuals away from humility obedience and reliance on divine grace because when you follow the most high you understand that your life is in his hands and only through his grace are you going to make it through you have humility you stay humble you obey his word you follow his law in his way and you don't rely on your own understanding verse i mean not verse four point four it says corruption and discord rather than promoting harmony unity and love as traditionally associated with angels left-handed angels might sort discord division and chaos and understand this the scripture in matthew i think it's chapter 11 i don't remember what verse or matthew chapter 10 hamashiach said i did not come to bring bring peace but a sword and division amongst them so the spirit of the Hamashiach is going to bring division, but this could also be talking about when you have these false understandings, it may cause confusion within the mind of people who believe, and they may lead to what? Bringing Pharisees, to bring in false understanding, false doctrine, water that's not pure. Because when you read, I think it's Jeremiah chapter one, it speaks about how the children of Israel have gone away from bringing water into their own cisterns, and they have gone away from pure waters of their own well of their mother right so a lot of these philosophies and, and from the gentiles and these pagan gods they mix pure water with corrupted water and that causes chaos and division so it says they could instigate conflict encourage selfishness or egotism and exploit human weaknesses for their own gain and this is the last one i'm gonna end it on this it says subversion of salvation 
It says, in contrast to biblical teachings on redemption and salvation through faith, faith in Hamashiach, left-handed angels might offer alternative paths to spiritual fulfillment or liberation that bypass or contradict Orthodox Christian doctrine. They could promote ideas of self-salvation, self-deification, or the pursuit of enlightenment through worldly means. And if I don't, if that don't understand and, and truly show you the same things that brothers talk about when we, we bring out the occult and Freemasonry, I don't know what it is because it's all based off of you obtaining salvation through who you are and what you've learned, as well as deifying yourself as your own, own God. Because what they do, they say you're a God. They, what, that's literally what they say, right? Not like God's in the Bible where it says you are a judge, but literally they call you a God. You're a manifestation of these gods. You've reached enlightenment, right? And self-deification or the pursuit of enlightenment through worldly means. So, you know, this is a great lesson. I'm glad you asked me that question, brother. Take heed to the warning and all you brothers and sisters who listened in as well. Um, you know, this stuff is, is very powerful and it can be very deceiving, bro. So, you have to have that understanding on knowledge. And if you don't understand what's going on, make sure you find a man who can break down the symbology of this. So that way you can understand why these people believe this. And that way you do not get deceived by the false lights of these Luciferians out here. So I give all praises to the Most High Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Until next time, it's the Brother Ash Ibai signing out.